everyone and welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to give you a very Japanese book haul. Um, so basically in the month of December I decided to read um, only books in Japanese because I haven't read any books this year yet, which is not good um, because I am supposed to be doing that. Um, so I'm reading only in Japanese this month so I did buy two books in Japanese but I did also buy two Japanese books translated in English recently that I am keeping for the beginning of next year because I'm starting to collect books for the beginning of the year because I felt 2020 my reading wasn't exactly there are no favorites everything was good but like just kind of like eh okay yeah like I enjoyed myself um but I wasn't, I'm not super excited about anything I actually read. So I, I, I um, am trying to collect books so I can have a really powerful good start to the new year. And so um, I bought two books translated into English by a Japanese author. So I thought I'd, you know, um, start with that first in this book haul. And the first one I want to talk about is There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job by Kikuko Tsumura who is the winner of the English Pen Award, apparently. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that is. But um, I want to read the blurb on this because I think it really describes the book perfectly and it shows you what I'm excited about. So, a woman walks into an, into an employment agency and requests a job that requires no reading, no writing, and ideally, very little thinking. As she moves from job to job, writing adverts for shops that mysteriously disappear and composing advice for rice cracker wrappers that generate thousands of devoted followers, it becomes increasingly apparent that she's not searching for the easiest job at all, but something altogether more meaningful. So I think this is going to be a really, you know, uh, comical, lyrical, but also very, um, almost maybe self-deprecating look about her role in the working society and what that means to be part of the working society. And I'm really excited about this because I think it'll be a good follow-up to um, Konbini Ningen, which was translated as Convenience Store Woman, which is was thankfully, I'm very happy, um, it became a huge hit in the English-speaking world um, because it was very deservedly so. Very deservedly so um, where Convenience Woman was about this woman who worked who had been spending, you know, the past 17 years working in the convenience store and was really part, and I was happy to be part um, of sort of just basic working society. I mean, the job meant nothing, it was easy, but she was happy to be in that. But society was telling her, you know, you need something a little bit more difficult. And so here you have a book about a woman who wants something easy, um, doesn't want to have to think, and just kind of just wants to follow, you know, push her way through the work in society, like make money, have a job, and just call it a day. So I think it'll be very, very interesting to sort of contrast these two and see um, how they reflect on sort of the same sort of topic. So I'm very, very excited about this one. I think I'm going to probably read this really at the beginning of the year um, uh, of 2021, maybe January, February, because I think this is going to be fantastic. The next book um, I bought it's called Inheritance, Inheritance from Mother by Minae Mizumura, um, an author I don't think I had ever heard of. I don't, um, I'd have to see what her name looks like in Japanese. Maybe that'll um, ring some bells. Um, but this is also a topic that I, that I very, very much like. And um, I kind of want to also read the blurb on this one. But basically, um, Mitsuki Katsura is a Japanese woman in her mid-50s, and her husband is having an affair with a much younger woman. In addition to her husband's infidelity, Mitsuki must deal with her ailing, ailing 80-something mother, a demanding, self-absorbed woman who is far from the image of the patient, self-sacrificing Japanese matriarch. Mitsuki finds herself guiltily dreaming of the day when her mother will finally pass on. While doing everything she can to ensure her mother's happiness, she grows wary of the responsibilities of being a doting daughter and worries she is sacrificing her chance to find fulfillment in her middle age. So this is this is a topic that I find really fascinating because, uh, yes, a woman in Japanese society is basically such, is supposed to be such a stronghold. She's supposed to do everything, you know, the child rearing, the, 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 
the cooking, the cleaning, um, she is supposed to have um, her hand in all the finances. She's supposed to be managing the finances, managing her husband's allowance. Um, she's supposed to not only take care of her family, but she's also supposed to be taking care of the family of her husband, her in-laws, like that's her role. And it's incredibly exhausting. And there's a lot of literature in Japan about this topic. And one of my favorites, which is, this book is, is beautiful and harrowing and very difficult to read because it's so frustrating. Um, but And that is The Twilight Years by uh, Sawako Ariyoshi, which is about a woman whose father-in-law kind of just, he just sort of degrades as soon as his wife has passed away. And his own son, her husband, refuses to take care of him. And it's basically about the treatment of the elderly in Japan, about how everyone just kind of wishes they would die so they could, you know, rid themselves of the burden of doting on someone like that. And so, I mean, that book is powerful, super, super powerful. And because this covers a lot of the similar themes, I really want to see where this one um, takes us. Because this this idea, yeah, that this women are just supposed to, in, just once they're married, they're just supposed to sacrifice their lives, sacrifice their individualism to basically take care of every single person. It's like the husband just decides, well, I don't have to do anything but make money now. Let's just leave everything to the woman. Um, so I think this is going to be a fantastic book. Um, and I'm very, very excited to read this. Next uh, two books that I want to introduce are in Japanese and these have not been translated into English um, So There's that at least this way if even if you can't read Japanese you can kind of see what literature exists in Japan that we're not getting in English um, But the first 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 book is Shizuka na Ame by Miyashita Natsu, Miyashita Natsu. and this book is actually um, the author of uh, her so basically her most her more famous book is um, this one Hitsuji to ah, I forgot how to read this Hitsuji to every single time Hitsuji to ah, Hagane no Mori Hitsuji to Hagane no Mori um, which has been translated into French actually it not in English but it has been translated into French into Une Forêt de Laine et d'Acier so it has been written, this has been translated into Japanese and this, uh, into French. And this was um, a huge hit in Japan. So sort of developed a piano teacher or piano student. I actually don't really remember the plot of it, um, but it was a huge hit. And I haven't read this one yet, but um, I bought this this month, actually not realizing it was the same author. And it turns out this is actually their debut. So this book, and I, uh, spoiler alert, I've already read it, um, contains two stories, Shizuka na Ame, which would be... It's literally a quiet rain, but in terms of the actual story, story, um, pl how that device fits in the story, I would call it. I would, yeah, I would translate it to a soundless rain. Um, and then it has the second story, he nitsunagu, so connecting days, the way the days come, the the way the the days come together. And she's gonna ame. Basically, I was just because I'm, I have because I haven't read it all in Japanese this year. I kind of wanted a warm up book, something that would be really easy to read, um, would be very quick to read, just to warm me up and get me, you know, get my my brain working again. So I didn't necessarily choose this for the plot. I kind of just chose it for how easy it looked as a read. Um, does that did it have a lot of dialogue? What kind of words are in it? So I kind of chose it mo mostly for that. And indeed, it was very easy to read. Um, but Shizugana Ame is basically um, a, a man who uh, one day after work goes to a taiyaki shop. A taiyaki is a, a type of um, sweet in Japan, a traditional sweet in Japan. And he kind of becomes enamored with the girl who works there and creates the taiyaki. And they, they sort of form a friendship. And, and, and it's kind of a casual friendship, sort of as customer and um, owner of this little shop. But one day she gets in an accident, um, she's in a coma, and when she wakes up again, she's, although she, re she remembers everything from before the accident, she remembers nothing of the accident, and she doesn't have a short-term memory anymore. She can only remember a day's events, and as soon as 
she wakes up the next morning she can't remember what happened the previous day so any she can't form new memories but within that within that new situation their relationship becomes stronger and they create a lasting a more lasting friendship and then eventually they they actually get together and she ends up living with him and it's sort of the story about how he wonders would their relationship have ever gotten this far if she, if she hadn't had that accident is he kind of taking advantage of her um conditions stuff like that and you know it's kind of like one of those lovey dovey stories that very easy to turn into a movie which it has this is the movie that it's turned into but you know just i bought it mostly to read um as a warm-up um not something i not something i would typically read in english but like basically um but the second story he needs to which I don't want to spoil my thoughts for the December, you know, what I read in December. Um, but Hinin Tsunagu is about a, a woman and her child and basically how she reflects on her life um, with her, her husband, basically. How they came to, to be together and have this child. And her husband seems very aloof, very not there, not present. And this is kind of like a woman's, you know role in, in, in life again so um i actually spoiler alert prefer the second story over the first story um but yeah i bought this this month um as a little you know warm-up and then the second book which i have not read again not not read yet is eki ni tomaro by yutaka isao isao kana yutaka that's not isao what is it makoto isao takumi Totally wrong. Isao Takumi. Um, Eki ni tomaro means let's stay at the station. Um, so basically this book is a, about a, a woman who at, she leaves her job because there was sexual harassment, uh, power harassment. Power harassment in, in Japanese basically means when your boss uses their role as a boss to just harass you, to just kind of enforce their, their ideals on you. And it's really just like overbearing, things like that. So power harassment um, and a lot of um, overtime, um, which would probably be unpaid in the circumstances. But she worked in this izakaya chain and she suffered all these things. And so she decides to leave her job <clears throat> and go to Hokkaido, where basically, um, I, I believe it's a, maybe an uncle or, or her dad, um, gives her the opportunity to um, be the sort of manager of a cottage and she goes off to live this new life but along the way the she stop, gets off at a, uh, at a station or the the train I don't know uh, does it even say it, it just basically says she was supposed to get onto the to the train to become to start a new life as the owner of this cottage but she gets off at a local station instead and basically lives a new life there instead basically so um it's going to be a lot about rural japan and these sort of like nobody stops kind of strain stations and just basically her creating a new life in this area so once again i kind of chose this for basically the ease um of reading just to once again kind of help me get back into reading but it seemed like a very quaint story and i really do like these stories about rural japan um since i do live in tokyo so yeah those are the four uh, Japanese books that I bought this uh, month. Two, one I've already read, the other one I probably will be reading this month, and then the other two I am saving for very early next year. I'm excited about all of them, um, and I'm excited about once again reading in Japanese because that was that's my goal, that's what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm trying to get to the level where I can read my favorite authors in Japanese, and there's a big gap to get to that so i'm supposed to be building up to that but i haven't so hopefully um by having a japanese december i can have a japanese 2021 anyway thanks for watching my very japanese book haul and i will see you guys in my next video bye